This will be my tips and tricks for getting on your rollers for the first time. So, oh, man, these 30 second bursts are great. Anyway, a um, couple things to start out with on these rollers. If you've never been on them before, you're gonna find that, that feeling of running across a sheet of ice is gonna be pretty prominent. But, uh, First things first, man, probably shouldn't have done so many bursts. Um, a couple things you want to do. I prefer this Cirrus uh, 9501 basic roller. It's got a good strong frame. It's foldable. You can stack it up against the wall. It has uh, aluminum rollers, and these are straight flat rollers. They're not concaved in the middle. I don't like those as much and I don't like all of the extra stuff that people add to these because they can get up into the thousand dollar range and it's really not needed. You just need something with a good flat roller. The reason I say flat is because when they're concave they kind of keep you in the center and it kind of defeats the purpose for balance. Whoo! And uh, what else? A uh, couple of items before you get started. Um, of course, pick up a good set of rollers, and then, depending on what bike you're using, uh, I'm using my 85 Hutch Trickstar here, primarily a 20 inch uh, BMX freestyle rider, so I have a couple 20 inch bikes. I've got some mountain bikes, but they're full gravity downhill, and with the suspension, uh, <laughs> they're murder on this, so. A couple things though to point out that you want on your bike first is you have to pump these tires up like rock hard um, and also the less tread the better because you're going to get less drag here on the rollers themselves so um, these freestyle tires uh, these are Kendas they're pretty good they've got a little bit of grip to them and because uh, uh, the knobbies have got some texture and uh, they're spaced tight together. The center ridge is pretty flat, but um, ideally what I'm gonna put on my 1980 Robinson is these Harrow Freestyle. And you can see here, these things have basically no tread on the center. So you pump these up to about 90 and uh, run those on the rollers, you're gonna get zero resistance. So that's gonna help considerably. It's gonna keep it nice and quiet and it's gonna, uh, really create less drag on the wheels because um, I'll show you a little bit later that on this when you're when you're riding you really can't coast um, because of the way the bike is positioned it's kind of sandwiched between the rollers you get a lot of resistance so um, it's just something to keep in mind now um, a couple things right off the bat that I want to start out with is first of all um, there's a lot of videos online a lot of roller failure videos and it mainly has to do with people that either haven't ridden these before they're not used to that cutting across the sheet of ice feeling and um, they're clipped in so a lot of them are on road bikes 26 27 inch 29 inch um, and they're they're clipping themselves in before they even have their balance and before they even have this drifting and control figured out so I don't really recommend that at all what I do recommend it's your first time out. Um, position these rollers next to a wall or give yourself something to hang on to, um, like a chair. Now, I'll show you the difference here between a wall and a chair. I don't really recommend this uh, compared to being next to a wall or in a hallway or in between a doorway. Much better, especially if you're not clipped in. So. Let's just get the bike on here real quick. And a couple things on the bike. I covered that on my other video. Is uh, as you can see, once you put the bike in between this little wedge, it does kind of stay where it's supposed to. So if you get the front wheel 
almost centered over the front roller. Um, so you can see here, almost but a little back, and the front axle basically to the back of the roller. That will keep it sandwiched between, and you're not going to have much drift going out forward as far as like pedaling too fast and having it leave the rollers. Same thing if you go a little bit less and you're going to drift back and this back wheel is going to come out. That's not typically going to happen either. If you keep a nice steady pace, you're going to be pretty much wedged in in this position. So um, why I say I recommend the wall over a chair is mainly because of hand position. So if you get on this and you put a chair next to you and you're on the roller here and you're holding on to a chair, yeah, this is okay, but you've only got one hand on the handlebars. And as you can see, what's happening now is as I lean holding onto the chair, the bike is gonna have a tendency to drift this way. And you're not gonna be able to fix that. And this is the point that if you were clipped in, yeah, you're gonna fall over. So you're going to have to reposition yourself and get yourself basically up in an upright position. So I don't really like this as much as I do going against the wall. So we'll get the chair out of the way. And I'll show you really the easiest way to get up and running and get your balance. So to get on the bike, I just recommend pulling the brakes, front, rear, both, depending on what you have, get yourself positioned. And then you can put your hand up against the wall, or it's best just to put your elbow or your forearm, that way you can grab the handlebars and you have full control here. And it's very easy to just put your elbow against the wall and see you're pretty much set up. And here's where I said you can feel, if you take yourself away from the wall, you can feel how you're sandwiched in and you're really not going forward or backwards in this position, especially with the added weight. So again, put your elbow or your forearm up against the wall, get both hands on the handlebars. Another thing that's important that I put in my other video is keep pedaling. A lot of people start out whether they're holding their hand against the wall, their arm or their elbow against the wall, or if they're even holding a chair, you'll see on a lot of the the failure videos or the first time out videos, people clipping in, what they do is they get into this position and then they go like this and then they try to get the foot up and get it clipped in. Well, once these wheels stop spinning, you don't have the gyro. So unless you're very good at balance and you can sit there and get yourself clipped in, um, you're just gonna fall over. <laughs> so I don't recommend that. What I do recommend is just get yourself against the wall, get that pedal going, and get the other foot up and get that motion started. What this will do is those gyros will get the bike up and get you onto the rollers. And as you can see here, um, whether I have my hand, which again, I don't have both hands on the handlebar, but if I have my elbow up against the wall, I can stay pretty much in an upright position and as I feel the balance I can take myself off and I can just work on this balance and if I need to I can fall back against the wall this is absolutely the very best once you have this pretty much figured out then you can clip in if you know you're going to be good so a lot of people have asked too like well, what happens if I mean, you're really cranking on this thing or you're standing up and you're really going and you drift off. So you drift off here to the side. So as you see, once the wheels stop spinning, they stop spinning. You're not going to go launching forward or if you slow down and we'll do that for you too. If you slow down to the point where you stop, you're not really going to drift back and come off the back rollers either. So as you're going like this, and you, and you stop, you're just gonna stop. So, so that's kind of a little bit of misunderstanding as far as launching forward or launching back. And I just showed you as you drift off. Now, as you're beginning, what I recommend, depending on what your roller is and what your setup is, this particular roller 
has the bands on either side. You can put the bands on the left side or on the right side. I recommend, depending on what your dominant foot is, which direction you like to start out. Um, mine is regular foot, snowboarding, skateboarding, bike riding. Um, so I'm starting out with my left leg. I recommend having your left arm against that wall or holding that chair and having your band on that same side because it's less likely you're going to put this foot down. It's more likely you're going to put this one down. So you want to be able to touch the ground, touch the rail, or go inside if need be. In case you've drifted all the way over to here, you might put your foot down here. And that way you're not stepping on that band on this side or doing any damage. So again, a um, couple things to note. Oh, I wanted to show you again drifting off. So if you're here on the wall, you're going along, you're moving, you're starting to drift to one side. Uh, you'll see as I come off of this roller here in the front, nothing happens. Again, balance, being able to stay upright, whether you're on the roller or not. It's more when you're starting to fall over and you're clipped in, you can't get unclipped. You're going to go over and you're going to hit the ground. You're not going to hit it with force of moving forward or whatever speed you're going, but you are going to tip over and fall down. So uh, just keep that in mind. I recommend that if you're not able to do that and to stay up and stay balanced uh, without the brakes on, then you should really work on that first before trying to get into this. Now, what this is primarily good for is uh, bursts. So you can sit here, pedal on this all you want. It's got a good amount of resistance, so it's a really good workout. Um, if you're using this to train for BMX or for sprinting, like getting out of the gate, um, then it's good to get to this point and then do 15 or 30 seconds sprints. And uh, yeah, that'll get your <laughs> that'll get your blood going. So, uh, and again, um, if you're air the tires down, or if you have any type of tread knobbies or something, you're gonna feel the resistance. And as you can see, uh, if I'm on this and I stop pedaling, I'm getting only a couple revolutions of coasting. So you've got to keep this going. And uh, that's about it. Uh, you know, there's some people online doing some tricks and stuff, getting on and off of these. Um, I've done it myself where, you know, just playing around, especially on this bike. Um, I'm, I'm better going left for bunny hopping off, but you can be up and running, stop your brakes, and then pull this this way and off. The back wheel will get sandwiched in, so it's usually better for for that little trick, if you're trying, trying to show off, <laughs> is to just be on it here, get close to the edge, break, and then get off. So you can get back on that way, but I don't really recommend it. Uh, this frame is pretty strong, but you do that enough times, and you do that on the rollers, you're just going to be bashing the, the bearing cups, and it's not really worth it. So, <sighs> yeah, you know, I had a feeling I probably shouldn't do four or five regular workouts <laughs> and then try to do this uh, tips and tricks video. But uh, I hope that helps and uh, can get you up and running. And uh, my last video with this uh, Saris roller, um, these are actually $2.99. I think mine was $3.24 with tax on Amazon. But again, free shipping and mine was delivered overnight without prime. Uh, so I think it came from California, just regular FedEx ground, showed up the next day, like one o'clock. So that worked out really good. And uh, yeah, I'd bring some other bikes down, show you on the longer distance, but it's basically all the same. Um, like I said, I have a World Cup GT Fury, full suspension, like 10 inches, and uh, it's miserable. <laughs> I mean, uh, like 30 seconds 
I am wiped out because that suspension and uh, it's got a 62.5 uh, slacker angle on the front. I have to put a 26 inch all the way on like 29 on the front just for the bike to fit. And uh, it's pretty brutal, but I wanted to get up to that point where I can really stand up and crank on that. And then um, other than that, I'm gonna reset the camera for one more thing because uh, unlike here in fabulous Las Vegas, uh, it is cold and it's cold for us. Certainly not gonna go out in shorts and ride around. And uh, if you're stuck, I mean, indoors, minus whatever, with a couple feet of snow, um, I'll show you something that's fun, fun to do because it's a good uh, pastime and it still gets your pedals in. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. So uh, as I said, here's a fun little thing if you're stuck indoors in the snow. Um, there's a couple sites online. This one is uh, indoor cycling videos, but you can go to YouTube, look for any any videos, uh, cars cruising the highway, going around the lake, uh, going through the mountains, whatever it is. Uh, just get this in front of your TV or projection, whatever. You can get yourself set up and uh, just sit here and ride it out. And you don't have to go fast. Just get here, get yourself balanced, and then just sit and watch the screen this at night and uh, man it's great and this is quite a workout you do this for uh, 30 minutes even at this pace yeah your legs are gonna be dead you got somebody here that you need to pass you stay behind them and follow the video you know look at the cadence You know, check the cadence over here. See how many revolutions per minute they're running. See what their speed is. Um, and they have interactive too, where you can put a little sensor on your pedal or on your crank and on your frame, and it'll match the video. So some of these are AI, they're 3D generated. Some of these are just real videos like this one.